This is Twit. Um, Joel, let's start by defining what gamma is and how it relates to the picture that we see on TV. Well, we can go into even a little further back. Uh, human beings are hopelessly analog, and uh, now they're in a digital <laughs> television era. Hopelessly you know, analog. I love that. Hopelessly. And, you know, we've been, you know, migrating from analog to digital for many, many years, and we're pretty much there. But one of the most confusing things we've had to deal with in describing televisions to dealers, their manufacturers, and end users is this funky term called gamma. And it's really related to how we see and how vacuum tubes, CRT devices, have been making pictures for years. And vacuum tubes being imprecise had a behavior that we could call nonlinear. To make it simple, if I send it a certain amount of signal, I expect to get a certain amount of light. Now, in a nice, neat, linear machine, if I double the amount of signal, I would get double the amount of light, except if I was dealing with it tube TV set, then I'd get sometimes, you know, half the signal would only give me 18% of the light. So it was kind of a curve instead of a straight line. And that's pretty much nothing we had to worry about in the entire tube era. And one which, of the which we extended to, from what, the 1930s, 40s, well, 50s if we anyway. go back to the first launch of high definition in the World's Fair in New York City, 1939, when we came up with the high definition 525 line system, which was much better than the German you know, 375 line system. And we even said one day we'd be able to make a big screen TV. And we defined that as 19 inches, which was as big <laughs> as we could go. You know? That was a dream back then. Yeah. But, you know, we had tube cameras, tube monitors in the studio and the few of us who could afford it bought two tvs at home and lugged them around with the huge weight and turned them on and got pictures for years now none of that got really complicated until the advent of the solid state camera which you know, was a predecessor to the solid state monitors that we have today but the solid state camera was accurate linear it behaved normal you get twice the light coming in, you get twice the signal going out. Nice, accurate machine. But if you had a TV show with nine cameras on it and one broke and you bought the new one, which was, you know, solid state, maybe transistors, but solid state, it couldn't look different because it's, you know, one of 10 cameras on the set. So we had to use, which something that became what I think is the dumbest word in the history of television, uh, since we did measure the nonlinear response of the tubes and we called it gamma, we took the perfectly behaving linear device, the accurate thing, and we made it wrong. We made it behave like an old fashioned tube. And the term we used was gamma correction. And of course, that kind of chuckle. If it's accurate and you make it wrong, you're not correcting it, you're just making it behave or emulate a tube TV set. And right. uh, we had to well, do the and same or a thing. tube camera. Or a tube camera. Now, the camera world went that way nicely for decades, and then all of a sudden we stopped playing at Texas Instruments with digital micromirror devices, which became DLPs. And a couple of PhDs showed us some cool looking devices that were flat TVs, and they were called plasma. And we had LCD devices, and all these things were going to play content. And we had you know, hundreds of millions of hours of content all made to be played on a tube. On so a CRT we, tube. Before we get any yeah. further, I want to show that picture, uh, which which is called Gamma Correction, I think. I, I called well, it that. Well, it's, it's from our old buddies at Barco in Europe. And Barco actually is an interesting acronym. And it's called Belgium American Radio Company. And these were the color scientists at actually, Barco. Actually, not, not that one. The, the, the previous one, uh, John, that, uh, that... No, sorry. The one that, uh, that has the uh, red... Red you got it. Swo no, swooping curve it. and the blue low swooping curve and the yellow straight line. I, I apologize for not having those file names handy. Let me see if I can find, pull it up real quick. We had it up a moment ago. We did before the show started was the one you no, used. Just a moment ago, I saw it on the right. There, there we go. it is. There it is. Thank you very much. I'm so sorry. Okay, no. so what we're seeing here is the take a look at it, those of you who aren't aren't able to view this video. Let's just take, oh, we'll describe it to you. We're seeing three curves, a blue one, a yellow one, and a magenta one. And the blue one is kind of a, it kind of bows downward. 
Uh, and that is the response of a CRT TV to an increasing signal level. Joel, as you were talking about, as you increase the signal level, you get more light out, but it's not linear. It doesn't follow that yellow straight line. It follows that blue curved line. So you increase the uh, signal level by up to a factor of two, and you only get, what What did you say, 18% more light out? Almost 50% signal gives us 18% light. 